Okay. Um, I know you talked about how Channel One uh, working there really inspired you to kind of start moving in this direction with your journalism. But what continues to inspire you to take your journalism career in the direction of you know working for social change and advocating for social change? I think the thing that inspires me is the fact that so few uh, news outlets are really covering issues substantively. Um, I find that there's more coverage of David Letterman um, and John and Kate than uh, the war in Afghanistan. Um, and I think that that's uh, something that really concerns me. So for me, I hope that people become more, one, interested, but they start demanding more of their news. I, I don't think it's uh, surprising that NPR is experiencing its highest ratings ever. Um, I think that that's because people are hungry for substantive stories. Um, I hope that other outlets follow suit. And that actually, it, it, that's what continues to inspire me to want to continue doing this kind of work, really, that, that too few people are doing it. Um, and that there are so many incredible stories in the world that are um, powerful and important sometimes devastating, sometimes moving, and um, I hope to be able to tell them. And I know you mentioned a little bit back there um, when a student asked me the questions, but why do you think that the media outlets you know, don't, don't cover these types of stories? Why is, it, why is it harder for them to, for this stuff to get on the air? Honestly, I think that ratings have a huge, um, huge impact on network's ability or desire to cover international stories and it costs a lot more you know to send correspondents right now to Afghanistan or Iraq or to many parts of Africa for example not only does it cost money to, to send the crews over but there's insurance I mean it's a, a pretty exorbitant cost and unfortunately uh, these days with the economy headed south news organizations are less willing to do that and I think it's really a shame the, the, I mean, the positive is that there's the internet now, and if you really, really want to seek out information about things that are happening, you can probably find it. It takes a little bit of work, but at least that resource is there, and I and I really hope that people do utilize it for that reason. This is the next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I couldn't help but, you know, watching those videos. You've been to so many scary places, seen a lot of scary things. Have you ever thought, you know, I... I, I can't do this. Whoa, this is this is too crazy. You know, you're flying up in a plane with gunshot happening underneath you. So I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> to my husband's chagrin, um, I feel really lucky to be able to do this kind of work. I mean, I know that there will be there will come a time where it becomes too physically debilitating, um, but then people like you will take over. No. Um, I think that there, there are so many opportunities and there's so many, there are so many stories in the world to tell and it's very difficult for me to want to, uh, to even consider not continuing. So as long as I can, I, I'm going to try. And the, uh, the adoption video was, was so heartwarming and I know you said that was a very rewarding experience. Would you say that was the most rewarding experience or what has been your, you know, you've been in the field Ooh. for a long time, what's been the, your most your favorite story or your most rewarding story experience? I've, I've experienced so many devastating stories and what I say to people is that I often encounter the worst in humanity but I always encounter the best in humanity at the same time. In, it's inevitable. Um, there are people who are on the forefront of trying to create change uh, and inspire people to raise awareness and, and those people really inspire me. And um, that's exciting to me. Um, and I know, again, you said that people always ask about, ask about your sister and how yeah. she's doing. How is she, how is she doing? My sister's doing great. It, for, it took a couple of weeks at first to acclimate, um, and she had a pretty severe ulcer uh, while she was there. I mean, she had it before she went to North Korea. So right now she's just trying to get healthy, but she's otherwise doing great. I mean she didn't have anything that, that being home couldn't cure. And how hard was that experience for your family when you first found out that you know, your sister was going to could be detained for 12 years, hard labor, over, overseas? <laughs> um, it was, it was, 
it was really the most difficult thing that we've ever encountered. But I think the thing that gave us, my sister was asked recently what gave her hope through the ordeal, and she said, well, I knew that my family would be relentless in their efforts to get us out, and we would have been. I mean, our whole family kind of put everything on hold for the whole summer and just really, you know, fought to get them back. So we're thrilled. And just one more quick, quick yeah. question. Oh. Um, on your website, I know that you mentioned um, to, you want to encourage. Yeah. Oh. Okay.